When was the last time you saw or heard a real live honest to goodness hurdy gurdy? Well, you could check it out online, or better, just go see a Christmas carol now playing at the Wells Theater through Christmas Eve. The familiar story comes off freshly vibrant and rollicking in the Virginia Stage Company's new production. Peter Moore plays Ebenezer Scrooge effectively, not as a sneering villain, but as a man of business who has forgotten how to be happy and truly doesn't understand what that means. This matter-of-fact approach makes his eventual conversion experience much more believable. Andy Patterson is equally excellent as Bob Cratchit, the underpaid, overworked, meek clerk who goes home after work to be rewarded and sustained by the happiness in his family in spite of poverty. The hard-working supporting cast plays between two and four roles apiece, whipping on and off stage with infectious merriment. Among them are Chris Van Cleve as Marley's gloomy, chain-dragging ghost. To save Scrooge from a similar fate, he warns him of the apparitions to come. Kim Stauffer is the attractive ghost of Christmas past, conjuring up happier scenes in Scrooge's life before money became all important. David Graham Jones, in a green robe with glittery torch and crown, plays the expansive ghost of Christmas present, showing Scrooge his nephew Fred's happiness and, even in the face of Tiny Tim's illness, the Cratchit family's joy. But what lingers in the memory is the faceless, impossibly tall, utterly menacing ghost of Christmas to come. He does not speak, merely gestures with bony, spectral fingers, heightened by eerie sounds. The effect is terrifying right up to the way he departs, whooshing up, up, up into the air and vanishing. It riveted even the rambunctious small boy sitting in front of me. The sets, costumes, sound, and lighting all work wonderfully together to recreate a Victorian Christmas. Patrick Mullins' stage direction keep things hurtling along at breakneck pace, yet never feels rushed. With an 8 o'clock curtain, I was heading home before 10, which bodes well for those with young children in tow. A word about the music. I really, really liked the addition of period carols and holiday songs. Most of them would be unfamiliar to the casual listener, but I can tell you this. Ranging from the 15th century to the 19th century, they were the perfect antidote to the sugary, stylized slush that passes for Christmas music these days. Fortunately, not on this station. And the songs were sung by different groupings of characters and carolers who sounded like normal people singing, to the accompaniment of all sorts of instruments, that marvelous hurdy-gurdy, penny whistle, guitar, buran, even at one point a cello strapped onto the player with a piece of rope. And the music kept the action moving smartly along, full marks to music director Barton Kubler. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge.